if a human has skin and potatoes have skin, how do we know we're not potatoes? Hey everybody, Reese here from StudyNova.com. Thanks for tuning into today's video. We're going to be talking about IB deadlines. Now, I know, I know, this might get you thinking, wait a second, I know what IB deadlines are. I don't need to know much about them. Well, let me just explain why I'm creating a video about IB deadlines. Now, IB deadlines are, I mean, common sense. You do them when you see them and you just get them out of the way. Common sense, right? But this is more from the psychological aspect. When you go into your managed bank account, for example, and then you see your time slots in your calendar completely congested with deadlines and you start freaking out and foaming at the mouth. Now, obviously, I'm kidding. You don't actually end up foaming at the mouth, but you do start stressing and worrying, which might be worse, especially if you haven't slept. Because if you've only been on four hours of sleep for the past week, then obviously you're going to have a much more negative effect, or at least you're going to have a much more negative reaction when it comes to viewing all these different deadlines that are due. So let's break down why it's important to talk about that. First of all, I highly doubt that the majority of the population is good at multitasking. If you're really good at managing four or five different deadlines at once, then you're probably part of the 0.0001% of the population, or I'm just ignorant and it's that easy. But for me and IB, what I did when I was approaching these types of deadlines, or at least my approach to working on these deadlines was that I would just work on whichever one was closer to the current date. I even asked my math SL teacher one time and asked him, how do you manage to do different amounts of work? And he just said, well, you just do whatever's closer. And that came from uh, educational professionals. So, I mean, if that doesn't count for anything, I don't know what does. So essentially, multitasking is difficult on its own. Doing two deadlines is difficult, especially if they're very different subjects. If you're doing a physics IA and then having to do, let's say, an English FOA, they're going to require different types of mental capacity and mental processes. One's extremely science-based and very theoretical, and one's very creative. So it might mess with your mind a little bit, you know, trying to manage those two separate tasks. But that's what I'm talking about. You see, you need to focus on what is close to the day. Now, obviously, you might be rolling your eyes and thinking, oh, well, I knew that already, but some students might not. Some students might try doing different amounts of work for different little deadlines to maybe 500 words for their business IA and then switch to doing 200 words for their economics IA. And then what you end up with is two very lackluster pieces of work that don't get marked very well. So the issue that I'm trying to bring up is don't really try to multitask. It's difficult to do. And if you know you're not good at it and it's only going to decrease the chances of you getting a decent grade, don't try to do it. Just focus on whatever's closer and focus on your strengths as well. Let's say you have an English FOA due tomorrow, but you've got an extended essay due three days after that. What are you going to do? Well, you're still going to probably focus on the English FOA, but let's say your English grade is at 7 right now. You're in HL and it's a 7 and you're very confident in your ability to create an excellent FOA. Maybe if you can manage it, you work on the extended essay instead just for a little bit and then move to the FOA because you need to know your strengths, right? If you're good at English and if you're a very creative person, maybe leave the art subjects and the language subjects to last because you know you can finish them quicker. And if you're weaker with the science subjects, maybe do those ones first. So for example, if you've got a physics IA due in two days and you're at a business IA due like in 24 hours, then you should probably put a lot more emphasis on doing a little bit of your physics IA and focusing a lot more on that and then moving to your business IA because that's where your core strengths are. You're very good at business and economics and English and you thrive at those three subjects but when it comes to physics and mathematics and biology you're not so good. So the major tip I really want you guys to take away from this video is that when it comes to multitasking don't really try it. I mean, just do it on a proximity basis. There is no other way to really do it. I know some of you probably already know that, but some of you might not. When you see your managed bank account and it's just filled with deadlines, hey, come on, you guys are going to get stressed out and you're going to start thinking, I got to do all these different things at once. Relax. There's only so much you can do because you're a human and because you're a high school IB student. So you can only do so much, right? You only have the capacity and the motivation and the energy to do so much work. So that's what I want you guys to take away from this video today. Don't try to multitask and try to upload earlier, by the way. It really helps if you can upload your assignments earlier because it creates a good rapport for your teacher and you kind of get, you know, a little bit of leeway if you ever upload an assignment in future quite late because if you've 
had this perfect record of uploading assignments on time, then your teacher might give you a chance or two if on occasion you actually miss out one or two deadlines by a couple minutes or an hour or so. So that's also a side tip to you know talk about. Just upload those deadlines early and get on the good side of your teachers. And the other one is obviously don't try to multitask. Just prioritize whatever is closer to the due date and focus on working on that. And if it's a part of your strength, then definitely try to focus on it. The only reason you might go back on that is if you're actually good at that subject that's due and you need to work on an assignment that is not exactly part of a subject that you're stronger with. So I hope you found that tip video useful. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Head over to studynova.com if you'd like to see more tips and tricks and videos to complement my articles. But for now, I'm Reese from studynova.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.